me share the steps to create an instance of a Guardian appliance in AWS. So we are here at the Amazon Marketplace. I already log in with my credentials and I'm going to search for Guardian. And we have two instances, an aggregator and a collector. Steps are basically the same for both. Let's create a collector. So we click here on the collector. Here is a product overview. Yeah. Estimated cost, the default region, the defaults. You take all the defaults in here and click continue to subscribe. And here are the terms and conditions that you, if you agree with those, you click on continue to configuration. And here are a couple of parameters uh, that uh, in most cases you will leave completely by default. This is the Amazon machine image and um, you take the default in here, it's actually the only option. What we decided is the software version and in here you can click on whatever region you have in the world. Okay. Click continue to launch and here there are a few options that now you need to select in particularly well here you can click and see the instructions, right? We we are not gonna you can read that at your leisure. We're going to uh, proceed with the action. The, in the action, you have three options. One is to launch through a virtual machine in Amazon, if you are familiar with that, and that's, that's what you want to do. You do it like that. Another one is to do this from the service catalog you may have. We're going to select the option to launch it from a website. The Instant type, the defaults are okay. They have been selected in here. And there is a link in the video description of this video, of course, that shows two documents. One is how you determine what is the right amount of uh, virtual CPU, disk, and memory that you need based on your environment. And another one is the ports that in case that you want to open additional port besides SSH 22 and 8443 which is for the GUI. Now the VPC settings, the virtual private cloud, I mean you definitely should select yours. If you don't have one uh, like I do, you can click here on create a VPC in EC2. The subnet settings, uh, this is basically the when the image will be created, these are the uh, the subnet that you will end up having. And of course, if you need another one that is not in this pull down menu, you click here on create a subnet and then don't forget to click refresh after you do that and then it will show up in the drop down menu. Uh, security group. I already have mine set up, which is this one, Guardium on AWS, but uh, you need to create, the, this is the, the security group, uh, and you need to create one, and what you do here, you put the name, your description, and in here, and this is important, so you can only access this instance of AWS, uh, Guardium appliance in AWS, from your specific IP, or a group of IPs, that, uh, so, so it's not accessible anywhere. By notice that the default is anywhere, uh, so you create that, you put your, your name, your description, and in here you put custom IP. And you need to put in here the IP address that this machine is going to be ac accessed from. If it's a one, if this is a, a CDAT range of the whole 192.168.02. But if it's just one IP, you, of course you put the same thing, slash 32. This is for the SSH and the same thing for the uh, GUI of it. Again, I created mine. I'm going to show it and trying to protect my, I, my uh, IP address in here, but that's what you will do. Remember, 
custom IP and put your uh, specific IP and then that appliance can only be accessed from that specific IP. Very important from security. You don't want to put something uh, general. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select from here my Guardian on AWS. Now keeper settings. The way that you log in into this appliance is not with user IDs and passwords. It's actually with keeper settings. And you need to create your keeper setting if you don't have one in here. When you do that, you will be asked to, you know, there's an option for creating your, uh, your set of keys and then the private key will be kept typically in the download uh, uh, folder in your machine. Now there's something I need to mention when we will be doing SSH, you need to do a change mode uh, to 400 to, to those keys so they will not be accessible by everybody. More on that later. So from here I'm going to select my the key pair that I already created and I click here launch. One thing I forgot to mention, if you don't want your instance to have an, uh, an automatic a public IP created, you need to go into the previous menu to uh, subnet settings, edit in EC2, and then uh, disable the public IP. In my case, I, I want to have one because that's what I'm going to be using to go via SSH and to the GUI into my instance of AWS. So I'm going to post a video until that uh, process uh, completes. And notice that you can uh, you can actually see that instance by clicking here to see the status of your uh, deployment. In fact, if I click on that link, you see that the instance is still being initialized. I would recommend you to wait here until you, you get a message that indicates that this has been completely uh, created. You optionally, and I'm not going to do it because I'm protecting the instance IDs of whatever is created here. Uh, but if you click here on their actions, there is a way of you to go into a, a snapshot, a screenshot of the actual console. And you can refresh that and see, you know, what is being done uh, on the process of the of creation. But again, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to wait here until that uh, uh, gets uh, fully deployed. Also notice that here is the public IP because I did not disable the generation of the public IP. This is the, the, the IP address that we're going to be using for uh, accessing this particular instance. So the image has been deployed and I click in here and do uh, you have multiple op options on their actions and when you look at the status of it you can actually see the public address and I'm, I'm not in this frame so I'm protecting the those instances but you can actually if you are aware when you hover in here you have an option to copy to the clipboard. Notice that this is the private IP. This is a way that you communicate internally within AWS. That's your uh, BPC, your virtual private cloud ID. You got all the data in here that you need. So I'm going to grab that IP and I'm going to access both the, the GUI as well as SSH. One more thing. This instance ID is going to be your default password the first time that you log in. So make sure you can actually go in here as, as, as in the same IP. If I were in this frame, when you hover around here, you have the option to copy that to the clipboard. So I open another tab on the browser and I'm doing HTTPS, that public address that we saw before. And the port for the GUI is 8443. So you get the standard, you know, self signed certificate type thing. You click here, advance, add exception, confirm security exception, and you'll be 
presented in here you put admin and then you're going to put that instance ID which is going to be your password I did not copy the right instance ID so as soon as I click login I was able, I'm challenged to change the password the old password is the all instance uh, the, the instance ID and I'm gonna put another password it has to be a combination of characters uh, numbers uppercase lowercase uh, special characters see if that works and I'm here I click setup and uh, I can actually input my license and I'm good to go let's actually do the SSH part to SSH we're going to SSH using the key pair. Remember the key pair that I have created before and I pointed to when I was creating the image. So we need to prove that we have the private key uh, that matches that public key. And you do that by doing SSH, that's I, and that's where, the, where I downloaded my private key, which is this one, and then CLI and that uh, public IP. And that should take us there. And yes, yeah, that's a good sign. We click here, yes and we are logged in in fact we can do show uh, system patch install and here we have it remember if when you issue that command you get a message that says unprotected pr private key file it's because you actually need to do a ch mode or change mode of this particular file that you, where you downloaded the private key to the ch mode 400 and then the name of the file and then you will not have that uh, message enjoy it